close your eyes. Imagine you're at a wedding. It's the early part of the wedding where you're all mingling in a big room, drinking wine and eating nibblies. You're in the middle of a conversation with a friend when you glance up at the door and notice that Hollywood stars George Clooney and Angelina Jolie have just walked through the door. You didn't know your friends were this well connected. Your heart skips a beat. You really want to go up to them, get an autograph, and most definitely a selfie, but something is stopping you. As you work up the courage to approach them, you notice that your heart is hammering in your chest. Your hands are sweaty and clammy, and your face is hot and turning a tomato shade of red. This is what we call the starstruck phenomenon. You may open your eyes. Now, imagine you can make people starstruck about your brand. Have you ever felt the frustration of knowing that you've got a brilliant product or service, but nobody is buying? Or maybe you are getting a few sales, but you're nowhere near the traction you thought you'd reach by now. Google Analytics shows you're getting unique, to the, unique visitors to your site each and every day. They're even getting as far as the shopping cart, but then they're ghosting it like a bad Tinder date. Why aren't they buying? Maybe they have no idea that your business exists. Maybe they've stumbled across your website quite by accident, but as they've never heard of it, they don't trust it enough to hand over their credit card details. Maybe their perception of your business is that it's really small and they doubt that you can deliver on your promises. And how frustrating is it to see your competitor in the limelight when you know you've got a superior service offering to them? And what does a lack of solid sales mean for you? A return to the corporate world with your towel between your legs? Giving up on the dreams that you've worked so hard to achieve? Not being able to provide for your family? This won't happen to you if you start creating the starstruck phenomenon for your brand. The good news for entrepreneurs is that there is a platform there for the taking that gives your brand instant trust and credibility and puts it right up there on a pedestal. This is what we call the media. And now I'll tell you a little bit about my story. I started my career working for a London production company, hanging up jackets, and there were many of them, it was London after all, and making really bad coffee. I got really lucky one day when the production assistant of the fashion and lifestyle documentary series suddenly quit. I begged and pleaded for the role, and I think they were sick of drinking my crappy coffee because the next thing I knew, I was running around the streets of London with a camera crew, interviewing the likes of high-end shoe designer Jimmy Choo and fashion designer Vivian Westwood. Talk about being starstruck. As happens to a lot of us Aussies, my working holiday visa expired and I was forced to come home. All right, not a bad place to be forced to come home to, but anyway. After a short stint at Getaway, I secured a job at Channel 9's A Current Affair. Yes, far less glamorous than interviewing Jimmy Choo, I will admit. I work with TV hosts Mike Munro, key reporters such as Tara Brown, and Ben Fordham, who's now the drive host on 2GB Radio, and I started on the very same day. I remember it so clearly. We were sitting opposite each other, all set up to do this job, and I looked at him as if to say, what the heck am I meant to do? I had no idea. But I was really excited to fake it till I made it and just make it work. Ben was 20 and I was 22, and we were just there to give it our best shot. While at a current affair, I saw the power that TV coverage had to catapult a business to a whole new level of success. I was being contacted all day long by business people, marketing managers, PR people, dodgy neighbours, all wanting their story on air but not having a clue how to pitch it to me. This inspired me to start WordStorm PR in the year 2000 because I knew how the media worked and what journalist days are like and how you need to communicate with them in order to get that cut through. I'm really passionate about working with entrepreneurs and business builders who are creating positive change in the world through their business. 
These guys, much like you, are often up against large corporations with buckets of money to throw at growth hacking strategies. And I'm really excited to empower them with the secret weapon, which is the starstruck phenomenon. Research shows that the more we see a certain face, the more we put it up on a pedestal. This is what is known as the exposure effect, according to James Bailey, who's a, who is a psychologist at George Washington University. The pleasurable biological cascade that takes place in our brain when we see a certain celebrity marks a neurochemical groove, making it pleasurable for our brain to process that image. Sydney-based psychologist takes this one step further, Dr. Jody Lowinger, by saying that it comes down to our own core vulnerabilities. As humans, we are wired for survival, and a big component of this is protecting ourselves from threat. And two of humans' biggest fears are the fear of, one, not being good enough, and two, the fear of being judged. And this has been exacerbated in current times through social media, where comparing ourselves to others becomes a daily dose before you even get out of bed in the morning. Who can relate to this? A few honest people in the audience, thank you. <laughs> so then the reason we are, when we see someone who we feel has the X factor, it creates such an emotional reaction in us, comes down to our needs for survival of the fittest. We are in awe of those who we perceive to have status, to have made it, because we just can't imagine ourselves being as successful and we would truly love to be. As humans, we're largely driven by our emotional brain. So when we see a famous person, the amygdala and limbic system overtake our prefrontal cortex, which is our thinking brain. And this is what has a physiological effect in our body. That's the clinical talk. Essentially, when you see a famous person who you greatly admire, you turn into a blabbering mess. That's what happens. So with this in mind, making people starstruck about your brand is very good for business. Let's take reality TV stars as a perfect example. Producers play unknown people from all walks of life, beam them into our lounge room several nights a week, and then we would continue to consume stories about these more and more familiar characters through the media we consume and our social media channels. Many a reality TV star has launched their business and career from a reality TV show. From Kim Kardashian, Guy Sebastian, Darren Palmer, Shayna Blaze, the fame factor allowed the careers of these people to skyrocket in a very short space of time. Let's take someone we all know and some of us love, <laughs> Michelle Bridges. Now, Michelle comes from a very humble background. She comes from a working class family in Newcastle. There wasn't a lot of money to go around. But she was a very determined young person, and from the age of 14, she just knew in her heart she wanted to work in the fitness industry. She was busy developing her career, and at the age of 25, she was an instructor for Les Mills, where she met her now ex-husband, Blake Moore, while training at one of the gym he owns. They got together and created a new gym in 2001. The two had a discussion, and they realised that there was a gap in the market for an aspirational woman in their 30s. Bill and Michelle made a business decision to develop her brand in the media. It did not happen by accident. But luckily for them and for her, it just so happened that TV host Kerry Ann Kennelly trained in the same gym where Michelle trained. Michelle admits to physically chasing her around the gym, and she probably did pretty well at that, <laughs> until she eventually got the chance to pitch for a regular fitness segment on her morning TV show. Michelle negotiated five free segments to prove her appeal. And the rest, as they say, is history. Michelle became a household name. And this led to her next massive opportunity, becoming one of the trainers in the biggest loser house. From here, her profile grew and grew. And in 2015, Michelle was named as the top in BRW's um, rich list with an estimated net worth of $53 million. Not bad 
for a personal trainer. Now, imagine you're in a CBD office quite like this one. You're waiting for the elevator doors to open. They open and in is standing Michelle Bridges. Like it or not, like her or not, you would want to say something witty and clever. You would most likely want to get her autograph and most definitely a selfie, but something would be stopping you. As you work up the courage to try and approach her, you notice that your heart is hammering in your chest. Your hands are sweaty and clammy and your face is hot and turning a tomato shade of red. Michelle has most definitely created the starstruck phenomenon for her brand. And each of you here has the possibility to create that same or close to or even something <laughs> starstruck phenomenon for your brand. This is because the more we see a brand and its spokespeople through our external references on a day-to-day -day basis, the more we put that spokesperson and the brand up there on a pedestal. And this is so possible for you all to achieve because journalists are thirsty for content. They're looking for content. They are hungry for it. They've got so much space to fill and you all have awesome stories to share. So what I'm going to do is give you a few key strategies that we use to get our clients in the media on a daily basis. So, firstly, think about your business and identify who would be the best spokesperson, who is the best person to represent your brand in the media. Once you've got that person, I would suggest getting them some media training because you've got this opportunity to share your message to your target audience through this media that will be amplified far and wide. So it's essential to know exactly what you want to say and how to answer any question and turn a question around in such a way that it favours you and the message that you want to get out. Secondly, have a really good think about your target audience and what media do they watch, read and listen to on a daily basis. Once you have an understanding of that, familiarise yourself with that media. Journalists working within these media outlets, outlets are looking for content that's going to engage and add value to their audience. That's all they're there for. They're not there to promote brands. They're there to deliver content that will keep their audience coming back. So the next step is to come up with newsworthy angles that's going to be completely relevant to their audience. And I am actually going to give you 10, ang 10 <laughs> angles that we use all the time to get our clients in mass media and mass exposure. Feel free to write these down. Um, they are gold. And the, the idea is that you can go away tonight, have a brainstorm with your team tomorrow, and actually implement this stuff. So here we go. Tip number one. Tips. Media love tips. Five tips on this, seven tips on that. Think about what your industry is and what tips you can give. You know, if you're in the fitness industry, five ways to get fit in time for summer. If you're in um, beauty industries, you know, best ways to, to beautify yourself before your wedding. You know, there can be five tips on just about anything relating to your industry. Here's an example of a client of ours, Avaza, which is a time tracking and collaboration platform. And the tips that they were giving were how to, t how to think about your brand globally from day one. These guys are now in 150 countries, but their strategy from the very beginning was going global. So an entrepreneurial magazine, which is their market, want to know about this stuff. So these are the five tips that were published. Next one, tip number two, ask the expert. This is similar to the first one, except here you have to get a little bit more in depth with the topic. The good things to think about is, you know, what are the trends of your industry? What was happening five years ago? What's happening five years from now? Is there some study that's come out that you can comment on? Um, and, you know, feel free to be controversial. But uh, once again, it's about looking at your industry and thinking, what are we experts on? What can we comment on that our audience will be interested in? So for Divorce Answered, which is an online platform basically taking the overwhelm out of getting divorced, um, 
one of the topics we put out there was knowing your rights in a de facto relationship. I don't know if any of you are in a de facto relationship, and if you are, I don't know if you have any idea, but basically in terms of legalities, you might as well be married. <laughs> so you might as well propose. But I had no idea, and most people didn't either, and that's why the media caught onto this story and ran it through so many different channels. I mean, this is just ABC, but she was literally, the story was published in a whole range of media. Next, we have a business story, and this is one that probably just about all the businesses in the room can, can use. So when most people think about pitching their business story, they think, great, I'm going to tell the journalists how much money I'm making, you know, we're increasing our you know, profits exponentially, we're exporting, we're doing all this fabulous stuff. But to be honest, that's all a little bit vanilla, particularly to an entrepreneurial journalist. What they want to know is, what is the backstory? Where's the human interest angle? What inspired you to start this business? What challenges did you face? How did you overcome those challenges? Give us the backstory because it's the emotion that the audience connects to. So that's what journalists want to write about. Drive Yellow is a hospitality platform helping hospitality industries take more brand control over the delivery of food. So what happened with Drive Yellow? Steve and Johnny were two mates. It was Halloween and they were having a drink and they were having a great old time until Johnny's phone started going crazy. Now Johnny owns a few crust pizza franchises and all sorts of delivery drivers were calling in and cancelling and he was really in a bit of a pickle because it was one of the busiest nights of the year and it was impossible to get more drivers. So as entrepreneurs do, they decide to just have a few more drinks and ponder this situation and really started discussing about the fact that why isn't there a solution for hospitality businesses whereby they can use the sharing economy for delivery. So just like Uber drivers deliver people around the place, um, Drive Yellow drivers will deliver food. So Drive Yellow was born and we pitched that story and that's why there's a photo of them sitting around casually drinking to the business press and it was syndicated across all the major metropolitan uh, newspapers nationally. Another good example is our client Laura Moore who's a wellness coach with a business called Uppy. So she used to own a vision personal training franchise and very, very unfortunately for her, within a few months of, of buying that franchise, it actually burnt down. So you can imagine how horrific this was. But she, she worked on herself and strategized and she ended up coming up with this amazing business and literally rose from the ashes. And you guessed it, that's the story we pitched to the media and they lapped it up. <laughs> And she, her story was published far and wide, and here's an example of a feature story that was recently in the Collective magazine. Then we've got awareness days and weeks of the year. So there is an awareness day for just about everything. All you need to do is check out Google and let your fingers do the walking and <laughs> you'll figure it out. Some days are very obvious and we all know about them, and others are a bit more obscure. I bet none of you knew that 19th of November was World Toilet Day. Did any of you know? But if you were a plumber, this would be your day. <laughs> so media want, to, want content that relates to the days or weeks of the year. So if you can relate your business and your industry to that day, you pitch them that angle and you're the one sitting on the couch at Today Extra or wherever it may be. An example is um, Peter Oxford, who's a cystic fibrosis sufferer, and he was really passionate about getting his survival story out during Cystic Vib Fibrosis Awareness Month, which is called 65 Roses. So we did a hard, fast campaign for him around that month, and media took it. And he, the awareness for cystic fibrosis was, was fantastic. Next, one of my favourites, online surveys. Media love statistics. Why? Because it makes them look like they've done some really good research. But it's not that hard. You know, there are so many platforms out there that you can use, and most of them are free to just ask a question and get some stats. A great example of this is this year we were working with a dental client, and one of our angles was dental anxiety. 
So we put out a survey, one question. How many people are so scared of the dentist that they haven't visited the dentist in over five years? We got an overwhelming response with about 85% in that category, which is massive. So we then combined that with a case study, which is another angle. If you have people who have had their lives transformed through using your product or service, they're the ones you want to put forward to the media. There's nothing as powerful as someone saying, this happened to me and this is so wonderful and that business did it all, than, than that. You know, far more powerful than you saying, I do wonderful things for people. But anyway, that aside, we combined these two angles and pitched to TV this story of this woman, Therese, who was so scared of the dentist, she hadn't been for over 10 years. Her mouth was a mess and she was a real estate agent, so she couldn't actually run her business properly because she was too self-conscious to open her mouth. Anyway, our dental boutique client offers, uh, offers an, um, what do you call it, when you go under, <laughs> an aesthetic. So she wasn't even conscious while they were fixing her teeth. Her teeth became beautiful, her smile radiant, her business boomed and her life has changed forever. And she was so happy about the results that she was happy to talk to anyone about it and she was very happy to go on TV and talk about it. Next we have business awards. Now if you're going to bother to apply to win a business and you happen to win, why don't you tell people? Now, I know you're all thinking, oh, we do. We put it through our social media channels. But what I would suggest is pitch it to the media. It's a perfect angle. Get them to write stories or run stories or interviews or whoever you're pitching it to. Get those articles or interviews and put that through social media. The credibility is far higher than just you mentioning you've won an award. Here's Bondi Chai, I don't know if any of you know of them, but they're a delicious drink. Um, and they won the Asia Pacific Awards uh, for their beverage. So we did, again, like a hard and fast campaign for that and they were everywhere. Um, while I'm on it, and that's not one of my tips, but images are really important when it comes to pitching your story to media. You need really good high-res images, and they don't have to be boring headshots of you just standing there looking like a robot. Have fun with it. If you work in a health food industry, go into a field of lettuces and lie there and get a photo taken. So just be creative because, I mean, you can see that shot there. There's nothing fancy about it, but it's a beautiful shot. And without a decent image, the media will not run your story. And we insist that our clients get professional images taken now because so often we've had clients say, oh, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll get a selfie tonight. <laughs> and it comes back with one eye missing and blurry and we just can't use it. So it's a really worthwhile investment to get some professional images. Just, just a little tip there for you. Next, product placement. If you have a product that you're selling, there are so many spots in media looking for beautiful product placement, They'll put a lovely blurb all about your product and how wonderful it is. And if it's online, you'll even get a backlink to your website, which is great for your SEO. So here's, this is our client, Winex, a very interesting product. It's like an alcohol keg. You get rid of the watermelon within the watermelon and put the alcohol in. Much better stuff. Next is holiday gift guide. Now, I mean, not many people buy the papers anymore, but if you happen to buy a newspaper in the lead up to Christmas, if you give it a bit of a flick, you'll notice that this catalogue falls out full of paid advertising of Christmas gift ideas. And what are you likely to do with that? Probably go straight to your recycling bin and chuck it in. So I don't suggest you pay for advertising in there. What I do suggest you do is find out which journalist is putting together their gift guide. There's lots and lots of gift guides in the lead up to Christmas and they're really specific. Gifts for men, gifts for mum, gifts for kids, gifts for a whole range of people. So if you've, and TV does this too, every morning show has a big table and in the lead up to Christmas they go through each of the gifts that they've selected and talk all about it. So if you have a product that's or, or an experience or a service, if it is a service, try and make it visual. Um, that is a good Christmas gift holiday gift guides are a winning bet for you. And this is our client Moochies. It's a smartwatch for kids in the Sunday age, which was syndicated all over the place. And last but not least, number 10, trending topics. 
What is the media talking about? What are your friends talking about? What are your colleagues talking about? What is the talk of the town today, this week? If you can in any way relate your business to that topic and put yourself forward as an expert, you're very likely to get that coverage. We do this all the time for our clients. Here's an example, just a few weeks ago or months ago, I'm not, I'm not yet, footy finals. Everyone's talking about the footy. But there was also a terrorism attack overseas around the same time. So not only was media talking all about the footy, they were talking about security. And our client is, owns a security facility called Calamity. So we took our client's expertise, reached out to the media, a whole range of media, TV, radio, newspapers, online, and just said, look, we've got an expert to comment. This is his opinion. Media want to keep trending topics going because it's obviously engaging their audience. So they want to keep the story flowing. And the way they keep it flowing is by getting experts and all sorts of different opinions to come and talk about it. So again, thinking about your industry, what are the topics? And sometimes it might not be so obvious. We had a client who does signage on cars and they had an interesting way of running this business. As a consumer, you bid how much you'd be prepared to pay to drive around with this signage. And it was essentially making a passive income. Now, around that time, the budget was announced and everyone had to pull in their purse, spring, purse strings and not spend as much. So we took a beautiful, fantastic photo of this car and pitched it out, make money while you're sitting in traffic. The news picked it up. So they did this whole story towards the end of the news. You know, the reporter was in traffic talking about how wonderful this, this um, business is and how everyone can be part of it. And then media follows media. So first it was on the news, then it was in the Sunday papers, and all because we related two things together that initially weren't that obviously matched. So just, just be creative with it. Brainstorm. Brainstorm with colleagues and friends. So essentially, that's it. What I'm here to tell you that it is possible for you to create and start creating that starstruck phenomenon for your brand. Maybe you'll go as far as Michelle Bridges, maybe not. But whatever happens, you, your brand will most definitely be up there on a pedestal and people will be coming to you instead of the other way around. So my message to you is start thinking about how you can incorporate this into your marketing strategies and watch your business Saw. Thank you very much.